Hello everyone. I hope, as per our previous videos, you're done installing Isaac Sim successfully. In this video, we're going to understand the interface of Isaac Sim in detail. I'll divide this video into sections with headings, so if you want to check a specific topic, you can jump directly to that part in the timeline. So let's get started. Here I'm using the workstation installation. Open your terminal, navigate to your Isaac Sim folder, and run the isaac-sim.selector.sh file. The selector window will pop up. Click the Start button and wait until Isaac Sim loads properly. Once Isaac Sim is open, this is the main stage, the area where you can see and run your simulation. This view is called the Perspective View. Let's first understand the viewport controls. To look around, right-click and hold, then move the mouse. To zoom in and zoom out, use the scroll wheel. To pan around, click and hold the scroll wheel, then move the mouse. You can also use keyboard controls. Hold the right mouse button and use W, A, S, D to move like in a game. Use Q and E to move up and down. And finally, press F to reset or focus on the selected object. Now, on the right hand side, you'll see the stage panel. This shows all the elements currently present in your simulation objects, lights, materials, sensors, and more. Just below that is the property panel, which displays the settings for whichever object you select. For example, if you select the default light, you can see all its properties here. At the bottom, there's the content panel, from where you can browse files on your computer and open or save your scenes. Next, let's look at lights. From the toolbar, you can choose different types of lights. Camera lights, which don't create shadows, or stage lights, which do. You can also use presets like Gray Studio for even lighting. Lights can also be added through the Create Light menu. Now, let's add some objects to the environment and understand other controls. Go to Create Mesh, and here you'll see multiple geometries available, such as Cube, Cone, Cylinder, and more. Let's click on Cylinder to add it into the stage. You can see three colored arrows on the object. These represent the X, Y, and Z axes. Press W or click the Move icon to move along the X, Y, and Z axis. Click and drag any of these arrows to move the object along that specific axis. If you click and drag on the flat square surfaces between the arrows, you can move the object within that plane. Next, to rotate the object, press E on your keyboard or click the Rotate icon on the left toolbar. You'll now see three circular handles. Use these colored spheres to rotate the cylinder around each axis. Similarly, to scale the object, press R or click the Scale icon. Then click and drag on a specific axis to scale along that direction, or use the cube at the center to scale it uniformly. You can also precisely control translate, orientation, and scale values under the property panel for more accurate adjustments. Now, let's add color to the object. First, select the cylinder in the stage panel. Then go to create materials on the surface. A new material is automatically linked to it under the Looks folder in the Stage panel. Click on this Omni surface, go to the Property panel, and under Material and Shader, click on Base. Now choose any color you like. You can also adjust material properties, such as making it metallic or changing roughness. Next, let's check its physics behavior when we start the simulation. First. Add a ground plane and move the cylinder a little bit up.
Sorry, I have selected the ground plane by mistake. Yes, now it's correct. Now, start the simulation. Nothing happens yet because the cylinder doesn't have any physics assigned. To fix this, in the stage panel, right-click on the object, go to Add Physics, and select Rigid Body. There are multiple physics options. Rigid Body, which gives the object weight and allows it to respond to gravity. Collider preset, which defines its physical boundaries to prevent it from passing through other objects. You can also select rigid body with collider preset, which applies both. You can also add physics directly from the property panel. If you only select rigid body, it might fall through the ground. After adding the collider preset, the object correctly collides and rests on the ground plane. Another important physics feature is the articulation route, which is used for robots or linked mechanical parts. We'll explore this in detail in the next tutorial when we start working with manipulators and robotic arms. Now, let's explore the assets and libraries. NVIDIA provides a large collection of free assets that you can directly use for your simulations. Go to Window Browser and make sure to enable Isaac Sim Assets Materials NVIDIA Assets SimReady Explorer Once enabled, you'll see them as new tabs in the bottom panel. Let's check Isaac Sim Assets first. You'll find various environments here. Just drag and drop an environment into the World Prim. Depending on the file size, it may take a few seconds to load. If you already have a ground plane, delete it to make the environment visible. You can also find multiple pre-built robots with complete articulation setups. Let's drag one in and check. Here it is. There are also ready-to-use materials and SimReady assets, which are optimized for real-time simulation. Next, let's add sensors. Go to Create Sensors, and you'll see options like cameras, LiDAR, and IMU sensors. Select the one you need, and it will be added to the stage panel. For example, let's select the Intel RealSense camera. You can now see it in the environment, and under the Property panel, you can configure its parameters such as focal length and other camera settings. Similarly, you can add and configure other sensors. You can also add audio to your simulation. Go to Create Audio and choose Sound Sources to make your environment more realistic. Now, let's move on to a very interesting part, Robotics Examples. First, open a new file. Then go to Window Examples and enable Robotics Examples. You'll see a new tab appear beside SimReady Explorer. This section includes pre-built simulations of real robots and training tasks, such as grasping, navigation, and quadruped locomotion. Let's try one. Select your tin palletizing, click Load, wait for it to initialize, and then click Start Palletizing you'll see the robot moving and stacking objects automatically. Let's check another one, the train policy example for a quadruped robot. Click load, wait for it to open, and once it's ready, you can move the robot using your keyboard arrow keys. It's a train model, so it reacts realistically. This gives you a good understanding of the basic interface and workflow in Isaac Sim. If I missed any details in this video, I'll cover them in upcoming tutorials and explain them in more depth. If you're confused about any part of the interface, let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. 
In the next video, we'll learn how to import your DF, STL, and STEP files into Isaac Sim. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, and thanks for watching.